Is it possible to cure, not manage autoimmunity? This is obviously a really important question for a lot of different folks. People with diagnoses ranging from Hashimoto's to Graves' disease, celiac disease, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, and IBD. But the question of whether or not you can cure autoimmunity and make it go away for good has been a controversial topic and one that is a little bit of a broken record, both in the conventional and functional medicine space. In this video, I'm going to hypothesize why the message that we typically get is probably incorrect, but curing autoimmunity is probably going to take a lot of effort. Like any good story, let's start at the beginning. Let's say that you just got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, whether it be Hashimoto's or IBD, the first question on your mind is probably, hey doc, can this be cured? And interestingly enough, no matter where you go, whether it be conventional medicine or the holistic space, you are probably gonna get the same answer. They're gonna tell you, no, this cannot be cured, but it can be managed. And now your goal is to manage this condition for the rest of your life. Now, the management is gonna look different between the two worlds. In conventional medicine, they're going to manage the condition with prescription medications. And in the holistic, functional medicine, naturopathic medicine space, they are going to say to manage it with a million gazillion supplements and a restricted diet more often than not. And the explanation that is given by both parties is typically that the immune system is built to never forget. And that has some logic to it, right? If you think about it from a pathogen disease model, if you have chicken pox when you're four years old, you want your immune system to remember that pathogen. You have memory cells in your immune system that remember stuff for you so that when you are exposed and your grandchild has chicken pox 70 years from then, you have some protection, you have some memory. And of course, if that system fails, if the memory and the protection fail you, that is when you get shingles and your own viral load gets to pop out of control. So it makes sense that in a world full of pathogens, viruses, bacteria, yeast, parasites, it makes perfect sense that the immune system is built to never forget. But then how do you explain people like me? I had a pretty raging food sensitivity against dairy and sesame. I can tell you my body hated those foods very vehemently for several years. And I do believe that it was, it, it was an immunological reaction and it was very inflammatory. But I can eat both of those things with absolutely no problem now. So did my immune system forget? Similarly, how do you explain children who have allergies in infancy and then they outgrow those allergies when they get to adolescence or adulthood? Heck, how do you explain immunotherapy for anaphylactic allergies? I have a friend who has a son with a very severe peanut allergy, severe enough that they told the kid when he was eight or nine years old, if you carry two EpiPens on you at all times and you do both EpiPens basically back to back, you still are probably gonna to need to be in the ICU for at least a week. That's how severe his peanut allergy is. But they started doing immunotherapy and slowly reintroducing bit by bit, little teeny tiny microscopic fragments of peanut. And now he's at a point where he takes a peanut or a peanut pill every single day and he's fine. So clearly the immune system can be re-educated. And the old notion of the immune system was built to never forget is not 100% true. And this is the way that I've conceptualized this and I've explained this in some Q and A's to my FODMAP Freedom students. It's not that the immune system doesn't forget, but it, I think it's capable of learning new, better information, right? So like we've all learned incorrect things or we've come to believe incorrect things, but if we're using our brains and we're being open-minded and we're trying to educate ourselves and better ourselves, we probably learned something new and we learned to override that file in our brain. At the risk of embarrassing myself very much, I will reveal one of mine. For my entire life, up through probably my late 20s or early 30s, I was of the belief that the lyric to the Eleanor Rigby Beatles song was all the lovely people. I thought it was a very happy song. They're singing about all the lovely people. I thought it was a very nice kumbaya sort of thing. And then years ago, my husband pointed out, it's actually all the lonely people. And he pointed out that like the, the 
musicality of the song itself sounds like kind of a bummer of a song. So the lyric I thought of wouldn't make sense anyway. Anyway, my point is, I remember that I thought that for many years. I thought that that was the lyric for 30-ish years of my life. But I now understand that that is incorrect and the lyric is actually all the lonely people. So I think that's the difference. Maybe the immune system doesn't forget, but maybe it can acquire new knowledge and it can learn just like you and I can. So the answer to the first question, is it possible to cure autoimmunity ever on planet Earth, period? I think is yes. I think it is possible for our immune system to learn new information and overcome autoimmunity. But the question at hand is, is it possible for you? Is it possible for you, the human being watching me right now on YouTube? Is it possible with you, your life, your circumstances, your coping strategies, your nutrition, your life, is it possible for you to overcome whatever diagnosis brought you to this video? And that's a little bit of a trickier question for me to answer, but I'm going to do my best. Now, the thing that I want to start with is that this journey is going to look different for different people, right? So like, let's conceptualize this with a series of pie charts. Forgive the circles that are not all that good. Yeah, that's pretty decent actually. They got better as they went along. So let's say that we have five different people with the same autoimmune disease. Let's actually make it that exciting. Same autoimmune disease. Let's say all of these people have rheumatoid arthritis. Over here, we might have one person who has a bit coming from this factor, but maybe this person only has a sliver. Say that this is sleep, right? Maybe sleep is a really big factor for this individual and it's a little tiny sliver for this person versus maybe sleep is half of the dang pie chart for this person here and so on and so forth. Similarly, there are going to be other factors. So again, that one might be sleep. Now let's think about nutrition. Like, are you getting enough vitamins and minerals and fiber and protein and nutrition through your food? Well, maybe for this person, this is half their pie chart. Maybe they have a really crap diet. Maybe this person also has a little teeny tiny sliver coming from nutrition and they're actually pretty dialed in. Maybe this person, it's a moderate amount. Maybe this person, it's also a moderate amount. You get the idea. Let's take another factor. Let's say mental health or stress. Heck, even things like relationships. Maybe this is a medium chunk for this person, but this is 95% of the pie chart for this individual. Let's give this person a medium amount, this person a moderate amount. You get the idea. These people with the same exact autoimmune disease and probably very similar symptoms probably have totally different lives, totally different health histories, totally different priorities in their life. And whether or not they're willing to address the things in their pie chart is going to make all the difference in the world. Now, the easiest way for me to explain this part is for me to use myself as an example. Because what I will tell you from clinical experience and my own personal experience is that we all have a certain amount of willingness to do what it takes. Let me put these down. So, okay. So picking on myself a little bit for a moment here, I know darn well that there are things that I could optimize in my health. And I know this is bizarre to say, cause I'm here on YouTube and I look like an expert and I like to think I am, but I'm still a human and I have flaws and brain lesions as I call them and preferences and quirks. And I know, for example, up until very, very recently, I have not really prioritized sleep. Now I get enough sleep. I love sleep and I get eight-ish hours every single night. And sometimes I get more on weekends, but I am also somebody who enjoys scrolling on my phone and watching K-pop and Instagram reels right up until the moment I go to bed. I read my webtoon comics right up until I go to bed. And up until this point, I just haven't prioritized that in my own health. I knew that it was bad for me. I knew that it was probably like altering my sleep or altering my stress level or something like that. But it wasn't until I recently got a little bit of a kick in the rear with a family health crisis that I learned to prioritize something that frankly, I did not prioritize before. Similarly, there are aspects of my diet that I know could be improved. I shared in a video not that long ago here on this channel that I don't get enough dietary iron 
and the iron that I do consume tends to come from plants. And my ferritin's a little bit low. Not terrible, not atrocious, but lower than I would like it to be. Well, if I prioritize this in my health and I went to the store and bought liver, I could probably turn it around, but I just haven't gotten off my butt to go to the farm and buy the grass-fed beef liver, which I already Google searched. I already found the place where I'm gonna buy it, by the way. <sighs> but you get my point. I have simply not made that a priority to get in the car, drive half an hour to the farm, get the grass-fed beef liver, bring it back home, learn how to cook it. I'm aware, but I haven't done it yet. And similarly, there are a lot of instances in my clinical work where people may or may not be aware of something, but they are unwilling to do what it takes. So whether it be the vegan client who has an iron deficiency and they're eating tons of plant-based iron, but they refuse to change their diet. They refuse to add in animal foods, even though the lab results that they're getting is staring them right in the face and telling them that their diet is not working whether it be the person who's eating you know, a ketogenic diet but has symptoms of fat malabsorption and they keep pushing through and thinking that high fat is the only diet for them. I have worked with people where relationships with toxic, nasty, narcissistic family members were clearly the primary driver of their disease and that one person in particular was willing to do every test on planet Earth, try every herb, every restrictive diet, all to avoid dealing with this toxic family member, which was almost certainly the cause of his disease process. And again, and it goes on and on. Like we all have things that we are willing to change and we are not willing to change. So the question in my mind is not, can you cure autoimmunity, but are you willing to do so? And are you willing to put in a lot of effort and probably a lot of time and money to dial in all of these different aspects of your life. Because if you look at these pie charts, if this person only tackled the pink thing, they're probably not gonna cure their condition. If this person only ever addressed the pink and the orange, they're not going to cure their autoimmune disease. What this is going to necessitate from you and me as a celiac is that we need to have all of our ducks in a row, at least for some period of time so that we can re-educate our immune systems. And, you know, there are many more pieces to the pie chart that I didn't even discuss. Obviously, dysbiosis or SIBO or candida or leaky gut, those things can absolutely be a piece of the pie chart. But it's probably not the only piece. And again, I think the key with something as complex and chronic as autoimmunity is that we probably need to have every single one of these things dialed in very, very well, almost to the point of being anally so, for probably an extended period of time, weeks, months, or perhaps years, before our immune system is willing to let go of the old information that frankly was keeping you safe up until this point. Remember, your immune system's only job in the whole wide world is keeping you safe. And if it has to attack part of your own body in order to do that, that's worth the collateral damage in the opinion of the immune system. So cut your immune system a little bit of a break it's just doing its job, it's just trying to keep you safe, it's just a little bit inefficient at the moment, and it probably needs a lot of help in a lot of different areas from you in order to actually heal and forget that you had an autoimmune disease. Now, this is the part of the video where I would normally talk about FODMAP Freedom. And we are enrolling again in August, and I would absolutely encourage you to join the waitlist down below if you're thinking about joining us. But rather than talk about the program itself or the prokinetics or the results, I wanna focus on a topic that seems more befitting for this particular video, which is the 365 day, 100% money back guarantee. Now, this is a good example of Rome wasn't built in a day, right? If you're watching this right now, you have probably not new to the autoimmune or even the gut health world. I'm sure you've tried a lot of different protocols, a lot of different diets, a lot of different supplements and you probably have some understanding of the complexity of what's going on with your body. So it's not gonna be shocking for me to say that it's gonna take time and effort and diligence for you to heal this, for you to overcome this. If you've had IBS or bloating or SIBO for months or years, it's gonna take you an extended period of time to really get your health back on track to the point that you want it. 
So that's why the refund policy is 365 days. People get an email, an anniversary email on the one year anniversary of joining FODMAP Freedom. And the way that it works is this. If you go through FODMAP Freedom, apply what you've learned for a full calendar year, and you still find that your tummy symptoms are there and not significantly reduced, so things like constipation, diarrhea, bloating, indigestion, abdominal distension, abdominal pain, if you find that those symptoms are not greatly reduced by going through my program and applying what you've learned, then I will happily give you your money back. But the question that comes up and why it's related to this video, oftentimes we'll get this question in discovery calls and folks will ask, well, wait, what about my other diagnoses or my other conditions, right? Like, what about my autoimmunity? What about my eczema? What about migraines? If my eczema doesn't go away, can I get my money back? If my autoimmunity is not significantly better, can I get my money back? And the answer is no. And while I understand that's a bummer, here's my rationale. I'm not such an egomaniac that I think I have the cure for all of humanity's ailments, right? Like there's got to be a line that I draw in the sand. I can't guarantee that I can cure everybody of everything. If I tell somebody with eczema that I can help them in FODMAP freedom and I guarantee that that is the case, who's to say I shouldn't make the same claim for somebody with stage four cancer? So there's gotta be a line. And part of this too is as a teacher and as a clinician, I need to understand what my zone of genius is and what is beyond my skill set, or what is not appropriate for the program that I have designed. So I know myself and I know my program well enough to understand it is a really freaking good gut healing program. And I do think it can help people with autoimmunity and eczema and migraines and other diagnoses. It's just, I can't guarantee that that is the case. I didn't design this program and I haven't researched to the same depth on those conditions. FODMAP Freedom was designed for people with IBS and SIBO and dysbiosis and candida. It wasn't designed for eczema or migraines or autoimmunity. So that's the difference. I do very much think that my methods can help a wide variety of people with many different conditions. It's just, there's gotta be a line in the sand of what I can guarantee and what I cannot. So what I can guarantee in FODMAP Freedom is that I will help you with pooping problems, whether that be constipation, diarrhea, or mixed bowel patterns. I can help you with abdominal distension and bloating and indigestion, abdominal pain. And if you have had a diagnosis of IBS, SIBO, IBD, or GERD, or something like exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, there is a high, high, high likelihood that I will be able to help you with those conditions. And I can guarantee that I can do so if you join FODMAP Freedom. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.